Welcome learners. Today we are going to discuss about the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981. So the Indian government has enacted the specific laws uh, under the article 253 of the constitution for the preservation of the natural resources and the law enacted for the preservation uh, or prevention of air prevention and control of air pollution act was in 1981 so under this act uh, the prevention control and abatement of air pollution for the establishment with a view to carry out the aforesaid purposes of the boards for conferring or and assigning to such board powers and function relating there to and for the matters connected. Basically, under this act, uh, the government has uh, enacted the boards, state or central pollution control boards for making the laws, for going for the penalties, for various clauses, and uh, for uh, uh, developing the <clears throat> or framing the uh, emission parameters for the air pollution. So the Air Pollution Prevention and Control of Pollution Act enacted in 1981, and later on it was amended in 1987 to provide for the prevention, control, and abatement of air pollution in India. Basically, uh, the these two acts, uh, first one is the Water Pollution Act, which we discussed yesterday. And this Air Pollution Act, they only came after the first Earth Summit in Stockholm 1972, which were based on the pollution uh, and thereafter, the Indian government has framed these two acts for reducing or preserving the water and air uh, from the pollution that has been generated from the various sectors or various sources. A brief about the Central Pollution Control Board. This is constituted under the Section 3 of Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. So, this shall, uh, without preju <coughs> preju uh, preju this, uh, to exercise and to perform its powers and function under the Act, to exercise the power and perform the functions of Central Pollution Control Board for prevention and control of the Air Pollution Act. Basically, uh, this board was constituted under the Water Act, but it also controls or have the various uh, sections about the I mean uh, it was created under the Water Act but it also uh, controls or frames the various parameters of air. Uh, similarly the state pollution control boards uh, were constituted under the section 4 of the Act of 1974 were, and uh, they uh, must be called as state pollution control boards. And uh, they basically, we have discussed yesterday, uh, the power of the state uh, framing the state control, uh, pollution control boards is only with the government. So there are certain um, clauses uh, when the parliament has power to frame the guidelines or uh, frame the members of the state pollution control boards that we have discussed in the water law. So, given the arrangement of sections, this law is basically uh, framed in uh, seven chapters and have uh, 54 sections. First chapter is preliminary and it contains uh, section 1 and 2 and then chapter 2 contains central and state boards for the prevention and control of pollution from section 3 to 15. And then chapter 3 consists of powers and functions of boards that is from the section 16 to 18 and chapter 4 uh, it's basically prevention and control of air pollution from section 19 to 31 and chapter 5 is funds audit and uh, accounts section uh, 32 to 36 and then penalties and uh, procedure in chapter 6 from section 37 to 46 and miscellaneous uh, in chapter 7 
under the section 47 and 54. So this is the arrangement of various sections and chapters of water, uh, this uh, air uh, prevention and control of pollution act 1981. So uh, this under this act, the state boards have been uh, are to be framed. So basically, uh, if you remember the scheme of uh, the uh, framing, there are 17 members of the state pollution control board. Same uh, is also uh, um, implements here. So there is one plus five plus five plus three plus two plus one scheme. So the first one is the chairman. Uh, it is the person who has special knowledge and practical experience with respect to the environmental protection and it's nominated by the state government. Then the five members of the state government may think uh, fit to be nominated by the state government to res uh, represent the government. So these are the five members that are to be nominated by the state government. And the other five members that all also uh, nominated by the state government but they are from the local authorities, like local urban bodies. And uh, five, uh, besides these five members, there are three members from the state government that they fit, uh, that they find or they think they are fit to be nominated in the state uh, pollution control boards. They are from the agriculture, fishery or industry or trade or labor whatever uh, is uh, related with the air pollution they represent these sectors and the last two members they represent from the corporate sector and basically uh, within the state the corporate sectors companies uh, owned and managed by the state uh, government to be nominated by the government and the last one is the full-time member secretary having such qualifications, knowledge and experience of scientific engineering and management. So these are all one plus, uh, one plus five plus five plus three plus two plus one scheme. There are 70 members of the state pollution control boards. So provided the state government shall ensure not less than two members uh, having specific uh, knowledge or practical experience in respect to matters to the improvement and quality of uh, prevention and control of abatement of pollution so every state pollution control board constituted under this act shall be a body uh, corporate with the names specified by the state government in the notification issued under subsection one having perpetual succession and common seal with the power subject to provision of this act to occur and dispose of the property and to contract and maybe the said name sue or suit. So these were the various uh, kind of uh, constitutional state board. So now what are the functions of the central uh, board? So first is to uh, advise the central government on any matter concerning improvement of the quality of air and prevention, control and abatement of air pollution. So in the Water Act, it was the abatement of water pollution and here it is abatement of air pollution. So second uh, function is to plan and execute nationwide programs for prevention, control or abatement of air pollution. So the nationwide programs may be the seminars, symposium, workshops or it can be the conferences. Basically, it uh, uh, to develop or to how to execute the various programs uh, on the national scale, and then to coordinate the activities between various states and resolve disputes among them. So there are the disputes uh, between various states regarding the air pollution. So the uh, central board board have the, uh, I mean, the duty to coordinate such activities and then to provide technical assistance and guidance to state boards carry out and sponsor research relating to the problems of air pollution and prevention control and or abatement of air pollution then to plan and organize the training of persons engaged in program for controlling the pollution then to organize through mass media a comprehensive program regarding the prevention, control or abatement of pollution. 
So next one is to collect, compile, and publish the technical and statistical data relating to the air pollution and measures to devise it for its effective prevention and then to lay down the standards for the quality of air and last one to collect disseminate information in respect matters relating to the air pollution so these are all the functions of the central pollution control board so what are the functions of the state pollution control board same like the central pollution control board they uh, advise the state government on any matter concerning for the prevention and control or abatement of pollution and uh, they uh, are to inspect air quality in air pollution control area for time to time and to take necessary actions to prevent and control the air pollution so these were the functions of state boards and uh, the central boards so what are the powers of uh, the pollution control boards so under section 19 boards can declare any area as air pollution control area like uh, the central board has notified the national capital territory of Del uh, delhi as uh, the air co pollution control area by the central government so the domain of the air pollution uh, control in the national capital territory uh, not whole delhi but nct uh, is under the central government so basically under the central pollution control board so under this section the government approves approved fuels should be uh, used in air pollution control area so in such areas uh, the government which have approved the certain kind of fuels that might be used in within a specific area should only be used um, So any other fuels if are used then it can be the gross violation of the air pollution act So then a uh, next one is it is necessary to take up clearance certificate from the boards before setting up an industry so if, if you are going to set up an industry in certain area, then you have to take clearance certificate, NOC certificate from the boards. Maybe it uh, is in jurisdiction of the state con pollution control board or central pollution control board. Then the board has powers to take emission uh, samples from any industry for analysis. Um, surprise visit can happen to an industry for the collection of the samples. It's the same uh, in also in the water. Then the samples of the water and air can be taken and then analysis can be done and then later on if there is any violation in the uh, certain kind of parameters then they can um, that lead, that can lead to a penalty uh, or uh, shutting down the business uh, if it is a gross violation so the boards can issue directions to respect to authorities under the motor vehicles act regarding standards for the motor emissions so these were the various powers of the pollution control boards and then the last one is the penalties under this section so under this uh, act under the section 37 of this act any person failing to comply with the provisions of section 21 or 22 uh, or directions issued under a uh, section 31 can be imprisoned for, for one and a half year to six years with a fine of rupees 5000 per day so under the section 37 the penalties have been discussed but there are certain directions in section 21 or 22 if those directions uh, for example emission standards have been violated then um, there are certain directions in section 21 22 and 31 a if these directions have been violated then under section 37 of this act it can uh, it can uh, i mean uh, lead to an imprisonment to one and a half year to uh, six years or with a fine of five thousand per day so if the violation continues beyond one year then imprisonment can be uh, increased up to the seven years or with fine so these are the various kinds of penalties and under section 39 of this act whoever contravenes any of the provision of this act for which no penalty have been elsewhere provided in this act shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term 
which may extend up to three months or with a fine which may extend up to 10,000 or uh, with both. So these were the various kinds of penalties depending upon the what kind of violation uh, have to be done or is to be done and uh, by a certain industry or a person. So it can uh, lead to a penalty or uh, the imprisonment. So this was very brief about the uh, the, air, uh, the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981. I hope you all enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.